skill level. And we are now... Welcome to the age of the great guilds. Thank you. Well, this is Rich Gen X, Rich Kale, Richard of the Great Classic Gamers Guild. Uh, just don't call me foolish enough to look under that hood. And it is now time to get back to to Loom. Alrighty. Uh, you know what I'm going to try and do? I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit. Just so we don't have... Uh, too much of a overflow. Actually, no, let me, uh, no, I can't turn that down. Okay. So first we got to load up and we're about to enter the forge. Now, one thing about the reflection spell, it will only wear off in one of two conditions. One, you end it yourself or two, the person whose image you're taking on dies. Hello, young nailbender. About time you were coming home. Stoke's been looking for you, and he ain't real happy. Oh, uh, that's not good. You better get in there right now. Okay. Well, we gotta go in. There's a lot of work going on here. Uh, they're busy. And uh, believe it or not, they are making swords. And that's Stoke. Well, it's about time, you lazy idiot. I sent you out four hours ago for firewood, and you bring me back one scrawny stick. If your father weren't the foreman, I'd toss you in the furnace. You're just like the used downstairs with the bishop right now. Uh -oh. If that fire goes out and the cleric's swords don't get done... I'm sorry, I had a bit of trouble. Perhaps you'd like to offer your confessions to the bishop in person. I'd be happy to arrange it. Now give me that stick! Uh-oh. I'm done dealing with the likes of you, Nailbender. I'll be back. And you'd better hope the furnace doesn't go out. What a mess. Uh-oh. I can't do anything without my distaff. Yeah, that's a problem. <sighs> that straw looks awfully comfortable, though. <sighs> oh. It must have a sleep draft woven into it. Okay. Well, now we have a Imagine problem. Imagine frightening a poor defenseless old thing like me. Cor. Uh-oh. Well, I may not be much good with fire, love, but I still enjoy the taste of tender, firm, young meat. Oh, no. One blasted stick of wood left. Curse that lad. 10,000 swords to forge, and the furnace is about as cold as my chances for promotion. Oh, that's not good. I don't believe this. Real nice of that weaver kid. Just wait until his turn comes. I'll be waiting for him on the outside. Uh-oh. And now... Oh, dear. That means back. trouble. Yes, because we've just seen the a... Atropos saw his staff fitted, so he'd have something to say about it. You, you could be sure of that. Oh, yeah. Careful now, old bird. Let's not singe the feathers. Mm. And it gets slid under the door. Oh, boy. Well, let's get our staff. All right. It's locked. Oh, but we can open it. Uh... 
Now, let's see. We go through the door, and I wonder how I got it. Hmm. Not a stick like that. Well, let's try, uh... uh... Now that refilled it. And now... It's time to go down. Hmm. Preparations. How much longer? Very good then. Hmm. Now he's looking to make that. I gotta get that blade dull. This is going to be a tricky one, because I'm trying to remember how the notes went. Oh, there we go. It's, uh... Hmm. It's too noisy to spin. They're talking. Edgewise, is that blade not ready yet? His Excellency is still waiting! The metal is proud, sir. It does not yield easily to my blows. More sweat will soften it, I trust. It will be a blade to be reckoned with. None if I have anything to do with it. It does have a certain apocalyptic ring to it. I trust I will not be kept waiting much longer. Good metal rewards patience, exalted one. And our client rewards quick service. Now pound! Maybe I should stand a bit closer. Now yeah, he's in the shadows. Oh, I think I just... What? What evil is this? A witch's curse has twisted the final blade. A curse, Edgewise? I think not. It would take more than a mere witch's curse to ruin my plans. You there! Could it be that this little prank is of your doing? Yes? Oh, well, boy. Well, then. I would be honored to have you as my guest at the cathedral. I know some other curses that may amuse you. Oh. oh that's a nasty little beast we're riding. At least nasty looking. I'm getting really tired of this. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bishop Mandible, trans-ultimate apostle of the anti-secular conclave of clerics. I know. Am I expected to kneel? Silence, you impudent punk! This is my assistant, Cobb. 
charmed, I'm sure. And you require no introduction. Your cloak and staff betray your origins. But I must say I'm surprised to find you here. It's been quite a long time since any weaver bothered to leave that dreary little rock you call home. Yeah. <laughs> Loom. <laughs> so provincial. I can't help but wonder what impelled you to leave it now. Hmm. Not that His much, tell you. His Excellency asked you a question. I know. I'm ignoring it. Ah. Recalcitrance. I see. Shall I fetch the uh, instruments of persuasion, Master? Please forgive my assistant his eagerness. I fear Cobb is not very worldly. He does not understand the dangerous power of a weaver. Dangerous? Your reverence, him? Quite dangerous indeed, my dear Cobb. In fact, he could burst this flimsy iron cage open with hardly a second thought. That's impossible, most exalted one. I inspect the locks personally every fortnight. Observe and learn, then, for even now your prisoner plans his escape. Hmm. Yeah, I do know how to get out. And that's the only way we progress, is to get out. See? You see, Cobb? An elusive breed, these weavers. Fortunately, however, they're quite helpless without their weaving sticks. That distaff will never work for you. Oh, no, my young friend, you're quite wrong about that. Come, let me show you why. Consider uh -oh. the common graveyard. There, the boundary between the living and the dead is indistinct. Every graveyard like that, so? Now, imagine what might happen if this delicate boundary were to be somehow breached. Torn open, so to speak. That's not that simple. You can't just rip the pattern apart like an old rag. But it is that simple, my boy, and I can. I have only to lift this rod, and the legions of the dead will stream forth onto the plain of the living. A vast army of the dead, nourished by the shepherd's flocks, armed by the artisanship of the blacksmiths, guided by the glassmaker's sphere. All under the spiritual leadership of one supreme commander, me! The final hour is now at hand. The age of the clerics is upon us. Mm, I have no. preparations to attend to, Cobb. Don't let this boy out of your sight. He is to touch nothing. Do you understand me? <laughs> Perfectly, Your Excellence. He's Lord trusting an idiot. Mandible, ruler of the universe. Yeah, it's not going to be that way. I do. I do like the sound of it. I'll have to change my stationery. Oh boy. You're not so dangerous now then, are you? Hmm. I don't trust this thing. She looks hungry. I think I'll stay out of her way. Hmm. Then let's look at the sphere. I don't think Cobb... Keep away from that! His eminence said not to touch anything! I wasn't going to touch it. Just looking, Cobb. That's all. Mm. Just looking, eh? Well then, perhaps we can do a bit of a trade. Uh-oh. How about I let you look in the sphere if... If... what? Well, the legends say that to gaze upon an uncloaked weaver brings death. Naturally. We clerics aren't given to such silly superstitions, but I'm curious. And stupid. Let's answer this one once and for all, shall we? No! May we have some quiet, please? I can't even begin to invoke the dead with all that screaming. Well? Well, he can't say he wasn't warned. Indeed. 
So you don't even see that scene in the standard or the practice version. It's only if you play expert. So let's check out the sphere. Oh, there's our swan again. What's this one? Oh, that ain't good. So let's check this one more time, and... Oh, that's not good either. All right, let's go get our staff. And I see Cobb has been lax in his duty. No, just yeah, stupid. Master. You're just in time to witness the dawn of a new era. You don't have the slightest idea of what you're doing. The pattern is already worn and frayed. If you rip a hole in it now, the consequences will be beyond anything you can imagine. Spare me your weaver mysticism, boy. The time has come when the dead shall no longer envy the living. Bad move. Oh boy. You've torn the pattern completely open. And with it, the eyes of the dead. Behold! I have a very bad feeling about this. So do I. Who dares disturb the peace of those who sleep? I welcome and greet you, noble spirit. I am Bishop Mandible. Transultimate Apostle of the Anti-Secular Conclave of Clerics. And whom have I the honor of summoning? I don't think I want to be part of this conversation. No one obeyed any summoning of yours, foolish mortal. I have summoned you. I am Chaos. You have nearly opened the door, and I have passed through it. For this, you shall be rewarded. Join me now, as my slave. Whoa! I see it has been much too long since my last visit. Uh-oh. I better get the staff. I can't seem to hold on to this thing. Yeah. Well. Uh-oh. That cage is open. That's not a good thing. All right. Well, we better get back. And, oh boy. That creature is free. Stop! Ah! We are now outside the pattern. Okay. Well, there's only one thing to do now. We gotta close the holes. Alright. Let's go to this next one. Uh, we're gonna run into somebody who's not too happy with us. But that looks like the forge area. There's nothing left but bones. Rusty? Is that you? Y you don't look at all well. I'm not well. Actually, I'm dead. I don't... I don't know what to say. You don't have to say a thing. What do I matter? I'm just another one of the dead. Oh, Rusty... I feel terrible. And I didn't know. And that's not even the end of it. I go outside to wait for doomsday, like a good little ghost scene. But no sooner do I get settled again, but some stupid idiot shreds the universe apart and hauls us all back inside. Uh -oh. There are a lot of very unhappy dead wandering around here. Let me tell you. I know. I was there when it happened. I might have known this was all your fault. No! No, it wasn't me. The bishop managed this one all on his own. Yeah? Well, 
there's going to be hell to pay, literally. Oh boy. There's talk among the dead that they're going to take over the world, starting with the forge. Uh, uh. Oh, My oh boy. Where we used to build strong things, good things. All right, we need to start rectifying this, so we need to make sure. We gotta pay this, we gotta pay Rusty back. So let's heal him. You did it! You brought me back! It is what you wanted, isn't it? Believe me, being alive is a lot more fun than being dead. But how did you do it? Well, healing your body was easy. You're alive because the pattern is torn and your soul was free to return to this side. Well, I must go, Bobbin. I've got to know what happened to the rest of my guild. And I must do the same. Good luck, Rusty. And be careful. Good fortune to you too, my friend. And that's the beginning of probably what would have been the second part. Forge. Alright, let's close this, pat this hole. It might help to point at something first. Oh, 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 oh. That's the wrong notes. I do it the other way around. No, I, I did it wrong way. one I think that's going to be the Shepherd's Guild oh boy you are too late wizard the dead have increased their numbers here those not dead are suffering and my songs were again useless all that's left for us is to put an end to their misery come and extend your help if you can oh don't worry I can help Shepherds were good people. Fleece, what became of us? I was just walking among legions of dead. You were saved by the mercy of yonder boy. We have not had the chance to thank you properly, wizard. But our memories are long, and we will not forget you soon. Hail and farewell. Come along now, before the dead ones return to the harvest. And police would have been the main character of the third part. What would have been the third part? Okay, let's close this door. Okay, let's get through here. One more path outside the pattern. No. Master Good Mold. Master Good Mold. Ah, the Weaver Boy. At least you this gave the terror of the Dead Wolves. It appears the Crystal Guard has not been so fortunate, but I don't understand. Why did you not use the Great Scythe? We never doubted the Scythe could save us. No, never, no indeed. <laughs> Even chaos must fall under its blade. But we could not do it. To unleash such merciless evil would show us to be no better than our enemies. The entire world would have feared us when it was done. And to have become so much like our enemy was unthinkable. <laughs> Just unthinkable. And so you didn't use it. We knew the price. The best we could hope for was to defend it bravely. But we are not warriors. You mean chaos stole the scythe? We did what we could, but it was not enough. Remember us, my young friend. 
tell the world that we walked with courage and chose death with clarity above all else. Can't heal him. He wouldn't want to be healed anyhow. I actually tried it once in the non talky version of this. Okay, let's close the pattern. Alright, and now we've just learned the note of B. Alright, let's get back, let's go over here. Well, Bobbin, you've been looking for swans. It's time to find them. Welcome, Bobbin. You have joined us here at last. Where am I? You are outside the pattern, the home of the dead, and of those transcended. The shore of wonder? Yes, Bobbin, the shore of wonder. And you are the first to behold it with mortal eyes. With mortal eyes? Your journey has been long, and you must have many questions. You're the swan that appeared each year on my birthday, aren't you? You saw me clearly then. I was never sure. But those visits meant so much. My only chance to watch you grow. You see, the elders forbade me to set foot on Loom Island just after you were born. I thought you came to visit me, but I never quite believed it. Call it a mother's curiosity. For indeed, Loom Child, that is who I am. My mother is a swan? Indeed. In mortal life, however, I was Lady Signa Threadbare, banished by the elders seventeen long years ago for drawing an unforeseen infant out of the loom. How I've longed to know you, and you to know me, my son. Liar! That's just not true. My mother is buried in the weaver's graveyard. Oh, dear Hetchel, she and the elders put that stone there so you wouldn't ask too many questions. Hetchel vowed to protect you forever, Bobbin. She is my dearest friend, and she loves you very much. Oh, my. But I fear her love has driven her to recklessness. What do you mean? Where is she? She flew off to Loom Island to confront the Dead Ones. The Dead Ones are after her? It's not Hetchel they're after, my son. They want the Loom itself. If Chaos masters its secrets, the pattern will be hers to control. Uh -oh. Hetchel plans to destroy the Loom. If chaos doesn't consume her first. No, I've got to go back there, now! You won't get far in that direction. The loom lies beyond the lake. No, you must try a more subtle strategy. Oh, what do you propose? The dead ones move between the holes your bishop friend rent in the pattern. Yeah. So I gotta close them all. Her eyes. They're just like mine. Okay. Well, then we have only one choice. We've got to close all the holes. Okay. And there's only one hole left. Right here. Okay, I can't close this one. It might help to point at something first. But I can't. There's no signal. Alright. Uh oh. The forge. The ghostly forge is now almost at Loom Island. Okay. Well, luckily we rushed right to... here. And we are at the loom itself. Still singing the lines of transcendence. Eee! Mind yourself, Bobbin! Get
Get your distaff ready. You must unmake the loom now before chaos takes control. What? How? I don't know what draft to use. <laughs> Birds and children have no business wielding such power. Weavers are the only ones who do have the right to use this power. Destiny has blessed you, young Threadbear. For you alone will live on to pass your guilt secrets to others more worthy of them. I invite you to serve my new empire as advisor. Me? You? Advisor? Of course. I will expect your full cooperation in this historic exchange of goodwill. After all, anything else may bring harm to our relationship. I don't think there's much of a relationship. Robin, heed me now. Here are the threads that will unmake the loom. Silence. Mitchell, say something, please. I need that drive. I think Enough. I lose patience in the presence of inferior beings. You will now instruct me in the use of this uh, Over my dead body. Preference noted. <laughs> yeah. The Hetchel is silent. So, we have to reverse those drafts. Goodness. Now, Bobbin, quickly, the spread is She's a she's a signet, not a duck. Oh boy. Ah, that was it. FB, FB. Uh, close your eyes now, Bobby. Keep your ears open. Here, 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 Hetchel's black feather. She left one behind. And so she did. I think she will keep it as a souvenir of our vigil encounter. I want that feather. Give it to me. My, my. Impudent, aren't we? There's only one thing to do. E C C B, I believe. Huh? That's it. Bobbin, Bobbin, you did it. The loom is unmade. You ignorant fools! Do you comprehend what you have done? None of us can pass across this rift your weaver mister has so blindly created. Your pious meddling has brought the end of my dream! You will hear for all eternity the cries of those you have abandoned, Bobbin Threadbear. You will always know that you have left them under my roof. We abandon no one. When our side of the pattern is mended, we will return and put an end to your evil. Come, Loon Child. It is time for us to begin our destinies anew. And now, we've 
gotten the last note. And there's only one thing to do now. Leave the pattern. Leaving so soon, Weaver? I was looking forward to spending Where is she throws the scythe blade. And now there's only one thing to do. Alright, here we go. C, I, C, F, G, C. Fly away while you can, young threadbear, and know that we will most assuredly meet again. I am ready, Mother. Let's go. Blade makes a sign of looks like the moon. And the swans fly off. And that is the end of Loom. Now, sadly, the story never continued, although there is a fan made effort to try and build the rest of it. As you see, the music of Tchaikovsky was used in this, as I said, Swan Lake. And that is, of course, the end of the Loom playthrough. I hope you've enjoyed this. And I was playing this on expert mode. Hence the trying parts of trying to remember them, everything. All our credits there of the people who's in this. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, next time, in a week's time after this is posted, you will be seeing me play another classic of science fiction epic. Set in that futuristic year of 1997, I'm talking about the game Zack McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders. I will be giving that the playthrough. Well, that's a fun little one to play. So until then, I hope you've enjoyed this. Go through my, uh, please subscribe to the channel. And check out the other playthroughs I've done. Listen for my wit, my wisdom, and snarkiness. I like to put some snarkiness. Especially when we do some crazy... Thanks to George Lucas. Lucas Film Game. Take care all. And enjoy. By the way, this was a game of the uh, game featured in Game Players Magazine. Game of the month. I forget which year though and what month. Had to be around 1990 though. Take care all. Have a good night.